Hi, my name is Dr. Sarashit Bhatina. I am an endoscopic surgeon and a fertility expert working at Indigo Women's Center Chennai. Today's video is very special because this constitutes majority of the work I do at the hospital and I am going to talk to you about the fertility enhancing procedures. If you get weak in the stomach quite easily, I would suggest you to skip this video because there are going to be a lot of surgical procedures shown. What are our goals when it comes to fertility enhancing procedures? We would like to enhance the spontaneous pregnancy outcomes, enhance the ART outcomes and also to restore the anatomy for the patients. By performing the fertility enhancing procedures, we would like to correct the anatomical factors which are causing infertility for the patient. How do you define infertility? Infertility is defined as a couple who have been trying for one year for pregnancy with unprotected intercourse with no success. And if in case the patient is more than 36 years of age, then this one year is reduced to six months. By performing fertility enhancing procedures, we aim to correct the anatomical factors of infertility which are dampening the chances of the patient to conceive. There is a constant war between the laparoscopic surgeons and the fertility experts. The laparoscopic surgeons would like to enhance the fertility of the patient just so the patient conceives naturally, whereas the fertility specialists would like to make the patient conceive as early as possible by using artificial reproductive medicine techniques. So who do you think is in the right? Right. Is it the ART specialist or the laparoscopic surgeons? Let me know in the comments down below. The incidental findings of a patient who is undergoing a diagnostic histolaparoscopy just before going for an IVF treatment have found that around 5% of the patients had some kind of uterine abnormalities. A diagnostic histolaparoscopy constitutes about 40% of all infertility workups and it is very important that we have to do a diagnostic hysteroscopy for a patient who has unexplained infertility because there is a high chance of finding some abnormality like adenomyosis, endometriosis or polyps for these patients. In our practice, it is rare that we do a diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy and do not find any abnormalities in the patients. Hysteroscopy is nothing but the visualization of inside the uterine cavity where we look at the endometrium where the embryo implants. We also have a look at the openings of the fallopian tubes and we have a look at the endocervical canal. The next step is the laparoscopic approach where we make a tiny incision just above the umbilicus and this is where we are able to visualize the uterus in all its glory and we would be able to see if there is any abnormalities outside the uterus like a fibroid or additions or adenomyosis or endometriosis and if we find any of these abnormalities they will be corrected immediately. At the same time we also flush the fallopian tubes to make sure that both of them are absolutely patent. It will be practically impossible for me to explain about each and every abnormality inside the uterus but I will try my best to explain to you of what are the commonest issues what are found and how do we treat them. A septum is a fleshy or sometimes fibrous band which divides the uterus into two halves and this makes it practically impossible for the implantation to take place and even if there is an implantation of the embryo the chances of continuing the pregnancy is very low. We use a specialized instrument called as a resectoscope which is attached to a Collins knife and this will help us cut out the septum. Uh, the most important part about a septal resection is to completely remove the septum because uh, if you undergo an incomplete septal resection then the chances are that you might have to undergo another procedure to completely remove it off. Polyps are little fleshy extensions which are formed inside the endometrium and these polyps can always only occur inside the uterus, they are never found outside the uterus. Using specialized 5 French scissors, we resect out these polyps and then we use specialized graspers to retrieve these polyps from the uterine cavity and we send them to the histopathological department to make sure they are absolutely normal and non-malignant. As I've already informed you, I'm not going to go in depth into each and every one of these abnormalities of the uterus and PCOD is again a very huge topic. If you want me to make more videos about uh, PCOD, do let me know in the comments down below. Most often polycystic ovarian disease does not require any treatment, but in patients who are resistant to clomiphene citrate or letrozole, then the patient can undergo a polycystic ovarian drilling to make sure that she ovulates uh, naturally. 
This procedure is quite simple. It only takes around 15 to 20 minutes to perform. And we hold the ovary with a grasper and then using a monopolar current, we make tiny holes inside the ovary on both the sides. And the number of holes depends on the size of the ovary and the volume of the ovary. Fibres are benign tumours which either grow inside or outside the uterus. Depending on the location, they are either called subserous fibroids, intramural fibroids or submucous fibroids. Almost 50% of the women in their reproductive age group may have fibroids, but only about 10% of them might suffer from issues like infertility, bleeding or spotting, sometimes even a lot of pain during their menstrual period. Fibroids which are either outside the uterus or inside the walls of the uterus do not usually cause any infertility but fibroids which are found inside the uterine cavity which are the submucous fibroids might cause infertility issues. Using the same resectoscope but with a different blade, we resect out the fibroid in tiny pieces and then we extract all of them out. This procedure requires a lot of expertise and this can be a disaster in inexperienced hands. In recent times, newer technologies like hysteroscopic morselation can also be done for the patients without any anesthesia. In patients who have a subserous or an intramural fibroid, then a laparoscopic approach is required. A lot of patients ask me how we remove the fibroids from the body. We use this particular device called as a morselator which resects the fibroid into tiny pieces and then we retrieve them from the abdominal cavity. Adenomyosis is a condition where the uterus becomes bulky because the endometrium grows into the myometrium. This basically means the inside of the uterus which is also known as the endometrium keeps growing or spreading like a disease inside the muscle of the uterus due to which the uterus becomes large and bulky and the patients might suffer from infertility. Most patients with adenomyosis may require artificial reproductive technologies like an IUI with folliculometry to help them enhance the chance of conceiving but if they do not conceive after trying for 6 to 7 cycles then the patient will have a choice of either going in for an adenomyotic resection to try to conceive naturally after that or they would go in for an IVF procedure. Adenomyotic resection demands a lot of time to perform. It also demands a lot of expertise to perform correctly. And if you would like to have a look at the complete procedure, do click the link which pops up. Coming to the fallopian tubes, if the patient is having blocked fallopian tubes, then using the specialized procedure called as the hysteroscopic cannulation, we are able to release these blocks. On the other hand, if the patient is having hydrosalphings, the chances are that we will go ahead and clip the tubes because these tubes are non-functional and they will not be able to conceive naturally. Even if the patient performs an IVF, the chances of the patients having a, a progression of the pregnancy might be much lesser if in case the tubes are not clipped. Recanalization is a procedure when the patient has a change of heart. Sometimes during the caesarean section or six months after the caesarean section, the patient might have a tubal sterilization. And when the patients want to have another baby after that, they have a procedure under performed called as the laparoscopic recanalization. This is quite a complex procedure. And if you want to have a look at the complete video, do look at the link which pops up. Coming to ovarian cysts, they can be benign, borderline or malignant. And if you want me to describe about all of these ovarian cysts in detail, do let me know in the comments down below. But for the sake of discussion, I'm going to only talk about benign cysts over here. Laparoscopic management of the cysts are quite simple. Uh, we open up the ovary, we pull out the cyst, we put it in a bag and we extract it out. It's as simple as that. But the most challenging step is to restore the ovary to its normal state. Most gynecologists forget or do not perform the step of restoring the anatomy of the ovary. But we are very specific that we have to do this so that the chance of folliculogenesis is much better from the next cycle. And finally coming to endometriosis, this is probably the most dreaded disease both for the patient as well as the doctor because the management is so vast and it requires a lot of expertise to perform surgically. Extensive research of the disease is not required for patients who are undergoing only ART treatment but the patients who are coming for pain management might require extensive resection of the disease.
disease. Patients who are undergoing endometriotic resection and the restoration of anatomy have excellent pregnancy outcomes and the chances of them conceiving are much higher after 3 months of surgery. Patients who are not conceiving naturally within the 3 months of endometriotic surgery, we recommend them to go ahead for folliculogenesis which is the monitoring of the follicles uh, to make sure when the ovulation occurs and we also ask the patient to take gonadotrophins to release more than one follicle every cycle. Although not a fertility enhancing procedure, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cervical incompetence. Patients who are unable to retain the pregnancy inside the uterus in the mid trimester. That is, the patient has a baby which is growing inside the abdomen, but because the size and the weight of the baby is more, the cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus, is unable to hold the pregnancy and the pregnancy completely comes out. This is an absolutely dreaded complication and Unfortunately, the only way to know if a patient is having cervical incompetence is if the patient undergoes or has a cervical incompetence. The only treatment for this patient is to plan for a cervical encirclage at around 12 to 15 weeks after she completes her NT scan. But if she has a failure of cervical encirclage, then we plan for a laparoscopic encirclage uh, which requires a lot of skill and expertise to perform. And if you want to have a look at the complete video, click the link which pops out here. That's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some good information from this. If you did, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. So until the next one guys, have a good day and see you in the next one.